Hello and welcome to NACAC at Night on TFTV. I'm your host, Cam Newell, here with my co-host, Ferris Calf. Ferris, tell them what we've got coming up in tonight's show. Well, we've got our biggest show of the year as we are sprinting towards NACAC. The North American, Central American and Caribbean Championships are coming to Toronto August 10th to 12th. And we've got a show to get you ready for it. So on your marks, get set, let's go. Up first, we have Team Canada long distance runner, Ben Carson. Ben represented Team Canada in the FISU World University Championships this year in Switzerland. He won a bronze medal in the Cross Country National Championships and an OUA Cross Country Gold Medal in 2016. He'll be going into his final year of eligibility as a member of Western University team this year. And sat down with my co-host, Ferris Calf to walk him through what competing at NACAC would mean to him. You're now currently running at Western. What, what, led, what led you down that path to eventually being a runner at Western? Um, well, there's a number of factors. Western's obviously a great academic school. Um, but as for running there, they have a very strong reputation. And I, I wanted to be a part of that and continue, continue that tradition. Um, but more than that, and as I've learned over, the, over my time at Western, more than anything, um, I've met my best friends, I've met my girlfriend, um, I have made friends for life. Well, what's Ben Carson's future after Western? Well, recently I've gotten into the, the longer distances, like the, the 10,000 and the half marathon. And I see myself, you know, five years down the road, um, hopefully making national teams in that event. Um, who knows, maybe the Olympics one day for the marathon. How do you, when you're approaching an event and you're in the last couple weeks, how does your preparation change and how do you prepare for that specific event? Well, kind of ironically enough, the weeks leading up to a big championship like NACAC, um, a runner will usually run less and take a break basically. And it's most, most runners' favorite time of the season because all the hard work is done and you basically just have to taper off and start mentally preparing for, for the big race. And um, you, you mentioned the Olympics and all these like representing Canada. You have represented Canada in FISU before. How was that experience for you? Oh, it was one of a kind. It was in Switzerland, which to start off made it an incredible, incredible experience. Meeting people from all over the world who share that same passion for running and competing that you do, it was, it was really grounding in it and it made you feel almost like you're part of something bigger. And obviously we're mentioning competing for your country and representing all your friends, all your family and everyone who's Canadian. Uh, NACAC is coming to Toronto, so not only will Canadian athletes be representing Canada, they'll also be representing Canada on home soil. What would an experience like that be for you? I think it would be just mind-blowing because you're running in front of all your friends and all your family who have helped you get through um, many obstacles that all runners face um, and it's culminating in you being able to represent your country um, on a stage that big. I mean that's, that's what every, every athlete, every runner strives for really. It was a great experience to be able to talk to Ben about his life aspirations, uh, track and field, and what it takes to compete at the highest level. But speaking of the highest level, Cam is going to give us a quick rundown of the major storylines this year. Going into this year's NACAC event, there are three main storylines. The USA's dominance, newcomer Justin Knight, and star injuries. Up first, the United States. The red, white, and blue dominated the first two NACAC championships in 2007 and 2015, taking home 73% of all gold medals. The American women have been especially strong. They won every track event at the 2015 championships and lost just two events overall. Will the United States be able to continue their reign over the medal table? We can't say for sure. But one man who will be trying to knock the USA off, at least in the 5,000 meters, is Canadian Justin Knight. The Toronto native just finished a stellar career at Syracuse University. The most decorated athlete in program history, 
Knight claimed 11 ACC individual titles, three NCAA titles, and holds three top 10 collegiate times in history, two in the 5,000 meters and one in the 1,500. The Syracuse Orange alumni will be in Canada competing for the second time this year, but it's the first time he's been able to compete in his hometown. Knight goes in and knack as the second seed in the 1,500 meters and will look to knock off American Riley Masters in the top spot. Perhaps the biggest hurdle for Canadians will have to jump over in their quest to dethrone the Americans, though, is overcoming injuries. Two of Canada's best gold medal chances, Alicia Newman and Andre DeGrasse, both suffered serious injuries this year. DeGrasse injured his hamstring on July 7th and has been ruled out of NACAC, but more on him later. Let's focus on Alicia Newman for now. The Olympian and 2018 Commonwealth Games pole vault champion was having a season to remember before her injury in May. Going into the summer, her future was uncertain. One step. That's all that separates setting records from sitting on the sidelines. For Canadian Olympian Alicia Newman, that step came in Eugene, Oregon, and resulted in a partially torn patella tendon. I'm such a competitor. I don't think at the end of the day, I still cried at night and I still cried all morning. And so it just, it took a couple days for me to realize that I was gonna be out week to week, depending on the injury. For Alicia, that acceptance came from looking backwards. Realizing that I kind of accomplished what I needed to do this year. I mean, I'm a Commonwealth gold medalist. Um, that was the one thing we wanted to do and bring home for our country. But here, Alicia Newman is down to one final attempt, 16 stride approach, fast on the runway. Alicia Newman of Canada, her last chance, the bar at 475, and she's done it! She's moved into first place, matching her Canadian record. Absolutely stunning, under pressure. Newman delivers! And that was exactly like the number one goal. And then the second goal is to break the Canadian record in and outdoor as many times as possible this year. Um, so I think when they started realizing that I had accomplished everything I needed to accomplish this year, it made me feel a little bit better. But accepting what happened and accepting it as the end to her season were two entirely different things. Doctors suggested I take the rest of the season off and I said absolutely not this has been like the best season so far and I want to keep it going and I just feel like I have so much more in me I had just started um, so I think when we were talking with them and dealing they're like okay with the doctors and the orthopedic surgeons and everyone they said we could probably get you through six weeks um, they had mentioned that they've seen worse than people had gotten through their season they've seen people with less and couldn't get through the season so it was really dependent on the person and what kind of pain and like how much you're really using that part of your body and I mean I use it that's all I use to take off it's that leg it's that knee and so um, we tried it on the Monday after 10 days of not doing anything rehab treatment and it just wasn't enough for me to sustain even jumping off of the ground and while searching for those silver linings in recovery Alicia found another simple one she was never alone. My coach was in the um, was in the hospital when I was getting my PRP holding my hand because it was huge needles <laughs> and I was scared but at the end of the day like, everyone's right there with me and it's not a career ending um, injury so at this point we're just going week to week make sure it's healed a hundred percent so that we can move on from it. In the end all this setback did was make her set the bar higher. So I, I still hope to be back for nationals and still compete at NACAC championship and I'm pretty sure I have enough um, points anyways for the Diamond League Finals, so hopefully Diamond League Finals and then the Continental Cup in September. I want to keep it going for as many Olympics as possible. Um, I, there's five Olympic rings, I've told everyone I want to do five Olympics, that's just been something I've said since I've been a little girl. Um, and just knowing that the next two years are going to be the biggest years of my life and this is really where I can really set Canadian pole vault on that world map. But while the goal is to cement Canada's place on the global pole vaulting stage, the dream doesn't end there. The dream come true? A uh, gold medal from the Olympics, a world record. Um, that's definitely something that I see myself doing. Um, I, I believe in my technique, I believe in my abilities, um, I believe in me personally as a person and what I want to achieve. I want to do the impossible and make it possible and that's something I've always carried with me through the past couple years. In the months since, Newman's recovery has moved forward without any setbacks, and the London, Ontario native has been ruled eligible for NACAC. From one injured athlete to another, Andre DeGrasse has not been as fortunate as Alicia Newman. 
His right hamstring injury will keep him out of NACAC altogether. With more on his injury and why it matters, we've got former scientist Thomas Ketko. Thanks guys. Look, some stars have a gravity to them that can be felt even when they can't be seen. Andre de Grasse is one of them. And his absence from this weekend's NACAC championships is notable. Not just because of the way it opens the field for other competitors like fellow Canadian Aaron Brown, but for what it means for DeGrasse's future. The poster boy for Canadian sprinting is sidelined for the second time in as many years with a right hamstring injury. He won't need surgery. He will, in all likelihood, recover. So, why does it matter? It's just a hamstring injury, right? You've probably had one at some point in your life. What's the big deal? It's a big deal for three reasons. Hamstring injuries are recurring. They are progressive. And the window in which a track athlete can compete is very, very narrow. Let's take a closer look at those. Number one, recurring. DeGrasse's injury happening to his right hamstring is no coincidence. The single greatest risk factor for a hamstring injury is having a previous hamstring injury on that location. Studies have shown that 30% of athletes who suffer a hamstring injury injure that same hamstring again the following season. In and of itself, that's bad, but it gets worse because each subsequent injury has a higher and higher chance of being more and more severe. What does that mean for a hamstring injury to be severe? Well, let's take a look. There are three grades of hamstring injuries. Grade one is probably what you've had at some point in your life. It is a mild strain. It's important to note that this is not a torn hamstring. You think of it more like an elastic band that's been stretched just a little too far. It still works, but you don't want to push it any further than that. Grade two is a partial tear. Now, as the name implies, this is worse than grade one. It is like a rope that has started to fray but hasn't been cut all the way in two. Now, that takes us to grade three, which is when the hamstring is torn completely. DeGrasse's first injury was a grade two tear. The injury, the results for the second injury have not been disclosed yet, but the point remains, with each injury and re-injury, the risk of missing entire seasons grows. Which takes us to that last point, windows. Competitive windows in track and field are small. Most sprinters reach their prime through their mid-20s and taper out shortly after that. At 23, DeGrasse isn't there yet. His best years may still be in front of him. But there's no negotiating with Father Time. The months of training he has lost, the competitions he has missed, there's no getting any of that back. Worst of all, the time sprinters are able to spend competing for championships is small. This isn't the NBA. All-time great talents can't change the way they play in the twilight of their careers to remain effective. Losing even one second's worth of explosiveness can remove you from contending for Olympic medals altogether. Whether DeGrasse is able to rally back from this injury and avoid another one is a story that is yet to be told. But all eyes in Canada will certainly be watching it unfold as we move closer to Tokyo 2020. Back to you guys in studio. Canadian track fans will be hoping that Andre DeGrasse's hamstring injuries are a thing of the past and will not impede on his ability to compete. On the topic of competition, we are really pleased to finally present the greatest showdown of all time, the Ryan Squared Fantasy Face-Off. In the left corner, standing at 6'7", we have Ryan B. And in the right corner, standing at 6'7", we have Ryan C. Who will be the Fantasy King? Let's find out. What's going on everybody? I'm Ryan B. He's Ryan C. This is NACAC at Night on Track and Field TV. Welcome to the Centennial College Fantasy Lab, sponsored by Sports and Other Things. 
Yeah, today we're going to be drafting athletes for the upcoming NACAC championships taking place in Toronto. We're selecting for five different categories. We're going to do one open category, that's your choice. Then we have to do one relay team, one long distance runner, one middle distance runner, one short distance runner, and then a field athlete. I've done a lot of research. I think I'm ready. How about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely ready on an off-camera coin flip. We decided that I would get the first overall pick. Fair is fair. Tails never fails. You know how it goes. So with my first overall, overall selection, I would like to select Shaughnessy Barber, the New Mexico native, competes for Team Canada, a little bit of a double agent. He's a pole vaulter, fully ginger. I call him the Red Rocket because he's going to pole vault over the competition. It's a quality choice, it's a quality choice. I'm very happy with my first overall selection, or not first overall, first selection for me that is, and that's Django Lovett, the BC native, stopped playing high, uh, soccer in high school because his coach said he was too slow. And as someone who's been too slow to do a lot of things in life, I root for him, I picked him on my team, I expect him to be unchained in these competitions. Absolutely, I can sympathize with people who are too slow. Uh, with my second selection, on my team, I'm picking the first female athlete off the board. She's the heir to the Syrup throne. She's smooth like butter. You can put her on a pancake. That's Lindsay Butterworth, the North Vancouver, BC native, is a 800 meter middle distance runner. Uh, she, was, she was a gold medalist at the 2018 Canadian National Championships and a perfect selection for my team. It's a good choice. It's a good choice. I am also going to take my first female athlete. Mm. And I'm going to go with Jasmine Frey, the Texas A&M grad, set a college record in her sophomore year at Texas A&M in the 800 meters, so I'm feeling pretty strong about this. And hey, as we all know about Texas A&M grads, when they come to Canada, they dominate. <laughs> Money Manziel, very, very relevant. Well, for my third selection, my sprinter, I'm taking Bismarck Botang, the Etobicoke native. He's a 100 meter runner, ran a 10.14 as his personal best. Hopefully he's not a one hit wonder like our man Biz Marquis. Say she's just a friend, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, I know about that. All right, well with my pick, I'm gonna go with Elijah Hall Thompson in the 200 meters. Um, not only does he sound like he's starring in a Disney Channel teen drama, but he set his personal best record earlier this year in March and he's only getting faster. He's, he's a very strong selection, I'm very happy with him. Absolutely, I'm surprised he was still on the board of the selection, although there's only two of us really competing against each other, so I guess that's on me. Well, now on to the relay portion where we have to pick a nation, of course. Uh, I'm going with the hometown crowd. Uh, they got the home, the home track advantage, we'll call it. I'm going with the Canadian relay team. They got my dog, uh, Tremaine Harris, on there. You'll see him a little bit later in the show, and uh, I think he's a, a great selection, a great addition to that Canadian relay team. Definitely, definitely. He's a great runner, great musician as well. Uh, I'm going to go with the Team USA relay team for the simple Great reason rivalry. that if there's any country that knows how to pass the baton seamlessly from one representative to the other, it's America. Got to go with them. <laughs> Absolutely. A little political joke in there. I like that. Well, for our open, uh, our, our open segment, I, tried, I decided to pick a field athlete as well. I'm going with another female athlete, Caroline Earhart. Uh, just like her grandmother, don't fact check that, Amelia, she'll soar past the competition in the women's triple jump this year, I feel. Yeah, it's a strong choice. I, though, am going to be going with Michael Norman. 400 meters is my open uh, choice. Look, I believe in the power of having two first names as your whole name. Look at Tom Brady, Michael Jordan. I'm just naming goats. I think he follows in that lineage, and I'm very happy with him as my final choice. You know, in the NFL, they call the last pick Mr. Irrelevant. I don't think that's going to be a very irrelevant pick here in this draft. Not at all. He's going to be very relevant coming up in the NACAC championships. Well, that does it here from us today. I'm Ryan B. He's Ryan C. Stick with us for the rest of the show here at NACAC at night on Track and Field TV. <clears throat> I don't know about you, Ferris, but I'm putting my money on Ryan. Smart. In our final segment of the show, audio engineer and fantasy guru Ryan Blevins took a ride with Canadian sprinter Tremaine Harris. The former 200-meter Canadian record holder went to his first Olympics in London 2012, and after missing Rio 2016, he talked about his hopes for NACAC and beyond to Tokyo 2020. Let's take a look. Hey bro, what's up? What's up, man? What's going on, man? Hop in. Right. Oh, here, let me unlock that for you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, we got a race to get you to, man. Yep. It's that time. All right, man. All right, man. How you been? Been chilling, man. You yeah. Come on, we're ready. All right, man. Yeah. Mind if I play some music real quick? Go ahead, man. All right, man. You know me? 
Okay. Yeah, you're a bit of a music guy, eh? Yerp. Yerp. So, you, I mean, you make music. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you make music, so, like, what's some of the inspirations that, like, you find in your music today? Oh, I'll, okay, so, it's crazy because, like, my music, it's so weird, first of all. Like, I know it's weird. <laughs> I know it's weird, but it bumps. So, like... It slaps, bro. Yeah, like, so, like, I got a lot of, like, uh, like, Lil John. Like that crunk, that crunk juice era and all that. That's yeah. a huge influence on like on my sound. A lot of that. You, know? you have like a lot of like southern rap influences too. Yeah, or, yeah. man. You can get yo like yo. Everybody knows like Atlanta was been running the show for years. <laughs> it's still going on. Like it's facts. So like Yin Yang Twins, uh, Lil Scrappy, all them cats, right? Mm -hmm. Then also I have like my real dancehall uh, influences that I had going. Up and like even especially like today like a vibes cartel kind of guy who really came in the game and like changed it with his melodies the sounds and metaphors like he's like I guess what you would call like the Lil Wayne of like dance art you uh, know for what sure. I mean like it's ridiculous so just that and then also I'm a huge R&B guy like I love art that's my favorite genre of music by far like, for sure I'm a I'm a, I'm a love boy. You know I mean? yeah, a, a hopeless romantic you know I mean? at heart, yeah, at heart. Trust me, you know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real lover boy So, <laughs> like, just like Growing up on a lot of Usher, Genuine mm. uh, TLC mm. Aaliyah uh, you know, but even Jacket, Tell me Akon, bro and, and, Nah, Ain't, nah, nah. Locked Come up, on, locked bro. up yeah, That's it? Jeezy, you know what, but like Nah, nah Akon's nah. my guy Nah, what would I mean? mean? Like, you know what? You know who was that? Like, I can't even lie. B2K. Okay. B2K. Okay. Backstreet Boys. Okay. Like, you know, I had a Backstreet Boys poster on my wall <laughs> growing up. Facts. <laughs> Hardcore facts. Super duper facts. Like, yo, I had a back, Backstreet Boys poster over my bed. I went to a Backstreet Boys concert. For sure. You know, I went to the Scream Tour concert too. So, like, Bow Wow, B2K were all there. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't, so, I don't think it's even possible. So, like, shifting from music. Yeah. Running, the yeah. other thing that you do, the yeah. hobby. My first love. <laughs> Your my first real love. love. What? Uh, I mean, NACAC. We'll start there. Yeah. What's What's the expectations for that? You're on the team, you're qualified. What's What's NACAC gonna be like for you? What's What's the buzz in the running community? Something I'm not a part of. Um, buzz. Well, first things first is always to go and win. Yeah, for sure. That's, you want to put on for, for Team Canada? That's, that's what we're all in. You know, there's six guys on the relay team who got to make it. So whoever the four are there uh, are going to run. No matter who you are, you better go out there and win. Ain't nothing else matter after that. It don't matter what leg you're running. It don't matter how fast you ran. Just make sure you win. Right? So that's like, when you come to the championship, it's not really about time no more. It's about capturing the victory, and we got the home soil, we got the home crowd, and all that. So you want to put on the show, you know. You want to walk around. You want to walk around with your chest high. Mm -hmm, you know, you want to sure. feel good and like leave a like, leave an impact on, on everyone in the crowd to remember. And you want to know that yo, I, when I ran at home and competed for my home country, like I showed up. So like that's just the mission, and that should be the only mission. And then the day, in my own. Yo, you mind if I pick up my boy? Go ahead, man. Oh, he's got to come with us. He's got to help us cover this, too. So we're going to go here and pick up Cam, man. He's going to hop in. All right, man. Scoop him up. Killer Cam. Killer Cam. <laughs> Killer Cam. Dipset. Look at him, man. He's looking all dapper here. Woo. GQ. Come on, GQ. Hey, Mr. GQ. Hop in, man. <laughs> Killer Cam. Hey, hop in. Oh. Don't mind the mess, bro. What's going on, man? You ready to go cover some NACAC? Let's go. All right, man, let's go. Oh, here we go. PYT. <laughs> PYT. I need me a PYT. <laughs> <laughs> So 
let's talk about Tokyo 2020. Yeah. I seen you on your IG story. Yeah. Two, we're two year and a half, two years outish. Year. You already, you already getting pumped for it. Year. What's, uh, what's the mindset there? Shoot, to be the best I can be, and obviously to go there and try to capture a gold, right? Like, that's why. Well, I can't say. I can't speak for everybody. Some people just go there just to be there. Uh, <laughs> But no, nah, like you know, the, since I was a child, the dream has always been to you know be an Olympic gold medalist, right? So I say, why not aim for the top and wherever you fall, you fall. For if sure. I fall on the gold, I fall on the silver, fall on the bronze, I'm just as happy. I'll for tell sure. you that much, you know what I mean? You gotta put so, on for the country, for sure. Exactly. Here we go. Oh, in my feelings! <laughs> oh, no, pull that back, pull that back, pull that back. We have to do the dance, fam. Right? <laughs> How you mean? Chuck, money, buddy. <laughs> I want to do a video for this for Instagram, you know? <laughs> I'm not lying. Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? Say you never ever leave from beside me. Cause I want you, and I need you. And I'm down for you always, KB. Do you love me? Are you riding? Say you never ever leave from beside me. Cause I want you, and I need you. And I'm down for you always. All right, Cam. Go yeah, get it, man. bro. Right. Man, it was nice riding you, man. Thank you for getting us there, man. Yeah. Appreciate, Appreciate it, man. You. Take it easy. I'll yeah, see you yeah, in a bit. Yeah. Appreciate you. All right, man. Take it easy. Yes, you listen to any chance? Chance Rapper? Yeah. Yeah. You listen to this new song? No. Oh, check this, bro. I haven't listened to any new chance since... Uh, Wild 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 nice, eh? for riding with us today no problem, bro. and best of luck at NACAC. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. That's all the time we have here on NACAC at night. Be sure to check out the NACAC championships August 10th to 12th at Varsity Stadium in Toronto, Ontario. For Ferris Calf, I'm Cam Newell signing off. See ya.